Around the world, the term Green Party carries roughly the same meaning. It is associated with vaguely left-wing redistributive politics, pacifism, feminism, with strange and creative forms of protest, with annoying activists who seem to care sincerely about issues most other people can't find time to really care about. They like to do things like gluing themselves to the pavement or openly advocate for outright human extinction. It is easy, therefore, to castigate them as unserious and deranged. As a political force, the typical Green Party has marginal impact on policy at best. It may be morally righteous, but unrealistic in its demands, stuck in the role of being a lone shrill voice outside the halls of real power. The US Green Party, for example, has no seats in any government whatsoever. In the UK, Greens have one seat out of 573 in the House of Commons. And in most other major countries, they are similarly limited to the edges of popular politics. But not so in Germany. Here the Greens are the third largest faction in the Bundestag, and in recent polls they stand as a close second with 26% supporting the Christian Democrats, 25% supporting the Greens and 21% for the Social Democrats. The German Greens are part of the ruling coalition not only on federal level, but also in the 11 out of 16 of German states. The German foreign minister is green and gained prominence thanks to her strong stance in supporting Ukraine by offering her not only humanitarian aid but a long list of military equipment as well as combat training and instruction for Ukrainian servicemen. One must appreciate here how difficult it is for post-World War II Germany to support an active war especially an active war against Russia, given the traumatic, although most would say not undeserved, experience that was the Russian conquest of the eastern half of their country, and all that entailed. Who could have guessed that the impulse for a more assertive foreign policy would come from the formerly pacifist Greens? The answer is Adolf Hitler. Look who's back! is an absolute gem of a movie, based on an excellent book. The premise is that the Führer, after falling unconscious in 1945, is miraculously transported in time and wakes up in 2014 Germany. The entire movie is basically an exploration of what would happen if the most globally well-known, most infamous person in all of German history would be forced to interact with modern Germany and give his takes on various modern issues. This type of story is not new at all. For example, the Russians made a similar movie called Ivan Vasilievich Switches Professions. Here an engineer invents a time machine and accidentally transports Ivan the Terrible out of the 16th century into the Soviet Union of the late 1970s, where he gets to explore modern Russia, which among other things is presented as more egalitarian. One of the many interesting moments in Look Who's Back is when Hitler is giving his opinions on the political landscape of modern Germany. After rightly calling modern German neo-Nazis and their political party weak and pathetic, unworthy of the time of any true German, he goes on to praise the Greens and to say that if he was to build a government with any modern German party, it would be with them. Protection of the environment, after all, is nothing other than protection of the homeland. By this rationale, no party is as committed to the defense of the German fatherland as the Greens. Look who's there is meant to be satire, but the reason satire is effective is because it can accurately represent certain aspects of reality. If there was not some kernel of truth there, it would not resonate and it would not be funny. So what is it about the German Greens? To me it seems like the reason they are the most German party is because they provide a path to something which Germany historically always tried to obtain. A sense of moral superiority and self-righteousness. Let me explain. In 1945 Germany lost any claim to moral superiority it may have had. Its high culture turned out to be permissive of one of the most barbaric regimes in world history. And instead of a civilizing force upon the world, they became a country that needed to be civilized by force. 
In the Western camp of the Cold War, Germany was but a student of democracy. Even if she was a model student, Germany seemed doomed to always be at the receiving end of moral lessons in civilization, with the teachers being the US and the UK. The German Green Party offers a different moral paradigm. Here, moral superiority does no longer belong to a country with the most free speech or the strongest private property rights. Instead, it belongs to a country that is the most committed to environmentalist values. Anglo-American concerns like low taxes or individual liberties are viewed as selfish and irresponsible towards the future of humanity. Green ideology offers Germany a way to regain their rightful place as the leading moral authority in the Western world. It is a way to regain the German sense of self-righteousness which they had developed over the centuries, ever since the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation inherited the moral authority and prestige of the original Roman Empire in the year 800 Anno Domini, when the Pope crowned Charlemagne as Western Roman Emperor. Throughout the medieval period and beyond, Germany thus claimed to be the inheritor and champion of the Roman and Christian tradition in Europe, at times even going so far as to claim suzerainty over all Catholic kings of Europe. The HRE was abolished in 1806, a millennium after its inception, but that time it left its mark on the German mentality. Otto von Bismarck, after reuniting Germany in 1871, expended great diplomatic effort to put Germany at the center of a network of alliances with Austria, Italy, Russia, Britain and other European powers, thus isolating the rival France and returning Germany to its traditional place at the nexus of diplomatic exchange. Furthermore, he aspired for Germany to become the referee and judge in international relations. For example, when Russia defeated Turkey in 1878, it was in Berlin where the final settlement for the new post-war borders was negotiated under German arbitration. Another less important but somehow more prominent example is the Anglo-American Pig War, where the German Emperor Wilhelm I was called upon in 1866 to judge and arbitrate the final settlement between Britain and the United States. Then, however, in the course of two world wars, German moral authority was thoroughly wiped out. Wiped out for generations to come. After the first round, Germans could still pride themselves on having created the most modern and progressive constitution ever seen with the establishment of the Weimar Republic. Even though one could argue that it was the Americans who coerced Germany into becoming a democracy by refusing to negotiate peace with the undemocratic government of the Kaiser. But at the end of the second round in 1945, German moral authority was not only gone, Germany stood there as the global villain, having united all of humanity against herself. Ever since, it was an object of German foreign policy to rejoin the ranks of civilized countries. It certainly doesn't apply to the Germans. No, no, they went in to cleanse themselves of genocide and apply for readmission to the human race. <laughs> The Cold War gave Germans an opportunity for limited redemption. This was true on both sides of the Iron Curtain. Both West and East Germany recreated themselves. One, as mentioned, a model student of democracy, the other as a model student of socialism. Today, the wounds of World War II are nearly healed. Germany is reunited. It is the much stronger partner in what used to be the Franco-German twin engine driving the European Union. The 2008 financial crisis and the following migrant crisis saw Germany take the leading moral role in Europe. We will bail out the Greeks and force them to comply with EU rule. We will take millions of refugees regardless of the cost. One does not need to agree with these policy decisions to recognize the moral courage behind them. The Germans made it clear they are ready to return to their traditional place as the moral leader of the Abendland, the traditional German name for the Christian Western world, meaning Sunset Land. With Trump's election, Germany for the first time since 1945 openly repudiated Anglo-American moral supremacy. Trump made it easy 
and for the first time you saw some American journalists calling the German Chancellor Angela Merkel the leader of the free world. But there is simply no way for Germany to become the moral leader in the paradigm of Anglo-Saxon free market capitalism. Here individual liberty and property rights are praised higher than classically German values like social responsibility, teamwork and conformity to a public moral code. In the Anglo-Saxon paradigm, you can no longer be a moral leader and make the argument that individual freedom ends where collective freedom begins. Ihre individuelle Freiheit endet dort, wo meine beginnt, wo die kollektive Freiheit beginnt. Such as the German Greens have in 2022 when speaking about vaccine mandates related to the COVID pandemic. But by adhering to a different but morally unassailable ideal of environmentalism, the German party lets Germans revert to more traditional German values, like social responsibility. And so by offering such an alternative, the Green Party becomes the German patriots' choice. The memes say that Hitler would support the Greens, but it is actually the Kaiser whose vision would be finally realized in a way if the Green program were successfully implemented in Germany. Kaiser Wilhelm II led Germany in the First World War towards the stated aim of providing his country with its own place under the sun, recognized and respected by all other powers. Whether you interpret the Kaiser's place under the sun remark as introducing more solar power or as making Germany a self-righteous moral authority again, as it has been for centuries, the Green Party provides the solution in both cases. And so, being much more mature than Green parties elsewhere, the German Greens aspire to play a central role in fulfilling the German national ambitions. In other countries, this is usually done by a more traditionalist party. But in post-World War II Germany, the only way to unabashedly profess one's patriotic love for the ancient Vaterland is by using the language of an environmentalist. <laughs>